Today I wanted to share an effective case study for a Crohn's disease patient. This patient, she was seven years old and she had been assessed quite thoroughly because she kept losing iron and becoming anemic. There was no possible explanation that they could determine here. They wanted to find out why. She did, you know, scoping and she did scans. She was kind of poked and prodded and they kind of couldn't figure out why until finally they did an MRI and it showed damage, a seven centimeter strip of damage to her small bowel, the end of her small bowel, the ilium. So when we look at her MRI, we can see asymmetrical mural thickening in the small bowel. And this is what led to the Crohn's disease diagnosis for this patient. Crohn's disease can turn up anywhere in the digestive tract and it can even have extra digestive or extra intestinal symptoms, meaning symptoms that present that aren't part of the digestive tract, that can present in other ways. The eyes can get inflamed and parts of the eyes, lips can get inflamed and present there. You know, it's really a systemic inflammatory condition. So when we're looking at our MRI results that kind of gave for the diagnosis of Crohn's disease, we see that seven centimeter segment of asymmetrical mural thickening. There's a few little bits here that are probably specific for the gastroenterologist. We're really focusing on that small bowel, narrowing in on the end of the small bowel, and it's no wonder this patient was so symptomatic. So if we're talking about her presenting symptoms, you know, obviously she wanted to heal the Crohn's. She had some duodenal ulcers as well from a past scoping that seemed to have resolved with the, um, you know, MRI here. She was significantly bloated and distended. And I do see a strong overlap between SIBO, which I talk a lot about, you can learn more about that here, and inflammatory bowel disease. And so far, I don't think one drives the other, and I don't think one's a root cause of the other, but they can definitely co-present, and it's kind of like a one plus one equals 10 on the symptom front. So she was noticing significant bloating, that was a really big one, and she almost described herself as being six to seven months kind of pregnant, she was that bloated. Other really big symptom, and this kind of narrows in a little bit more on the inflammatory bowel disease side of things, was the bowel bowel movements. And she was having formed bowel movements, which is less common, and she can have maybe up to five bowel movements a day. And so when the stomach is a little bit upset, when she's a bit in a flare, they can be looser and they can be more frequent. So one big piece for her here, and this definitely took a little bit more creativity, we had to work together, is she couldn't do anything in liquid. She couldn't stir kind of powders and dissolve them in liquids. She actually couldn't kind of get them down into the stomach and they would just kind of sit there and make her feel quite ill and they wouldn't move, maybe a bit of that motility issue. So we had to work with capsules only and that'll really kind of come to a fore when we get to the uh, treatment plan soon. So on the conventional side of things, when they tried to treat her, she just could not tolerate the drugs. So she started off with steroids. I started her on a steroid taper. She just could not sleep, it wasn't helpful at all. They graduated her to mercaptopurine and she just could not tolerate this at all. She just couldn't keep it down, she was throwing up, she was extremely nauseous, her body was just kind of rejecting this. And she found the exact same thing with Imuran as well. So she was very nauseous, she was throwing up, she couldn't tolerate it. It caused a surface thrombosis, which then became infected. I mean, by the time we started working together, she was just so kind of off conventional medicines. And they were holding this other biologic over her saying, look, if you don't improve, we are going to strongly recommend it. We're already strongly recommending it. And she was just saying, look, just give me a chance. Let's see if we can get ahead of this naturally. And if I need it, it's always there. So let's talk about the first recommendations here. I recommended uh, curcumin extract. I recommended Boswellia. And I also recommended some fish oil. We were just starting low and slow because her symptoms weren't extreme. We're seeing how she tracked. And when she came back, she was feeling a lot better. She was less inflamed. Her bowels were improving a little bit. So we said, great, let's start to expand it out a little bit. Let's start with something, adding on something like a butyrate supplement, a little bit of that partially hydrolyzed guar gum that came in a capsule, which is kind of unusual. Normally we'll just mix it in, uh, in water as a powder. And the last little piece here would be a spore-based probiotic. The other huge thing that we started, and this is a little bit of a game, 
gamble and it doesn't work for everyone, but if it doesn't feel good, you just stop it, shelf it, and we come back was glutamine supplementation. And again, normally I'd be ramping patients up to high doses to get the effects of healing that small bowel, but because she could only do capsules, we were just working on lower doses in capsules. And that was a really big theme for her. We never actually ramp things up to strong therapies. We're building that foundation. We're reducing the inflammation, we're tuning the immune system, and we're healing the gut lining. We're doing a little bit of microbiome kind of remodeling with the partially hydrolyzed foie gum and with the butyrate, and we're looking for improvements as we start to stack these therapies on top of each other. So the patient was doing really well, and she was out celebrating a milestone, and she was exposed to industrial seed oils, and this was a really big turning point in the case, and she flared significantly significantly. She went back to her GP, got her calprotectin retested. And we can see it right here. It went from 378 around about when she got diagnosed in um, 2022 all the way up to 1330. So I mean, even originally she was presenting with high calprotectin. This is definitely up in the inflammatory bowel disease kind of ranges. 1330 is significantly elevated. So something had gone seriously wrong. She knew that. She was having loose watery bowel movements, abdominal pain. She was just really not doing well. It's definitely worth checking in with your specialist because these are severely elevated calprotectin. But let's just soothe the gut, give it a week or two, see if we can soothe the gut down and then let's retest your calprotectin so we can see how much momentum we can get and we can come to your specialist with more data. She already had a specialist booked in. He was hard to, he was hard to see. So we said, look, we've got a little bit of a runway where we can improve the uh, condition and the labs and we can again come with more data for the specialist. So from there, the recommendation was to keep up with everything you were already working on and then to layer in this product called GI Revive by Designs for Health. There'll be a link in the description below just to help you track it down if it's helpful. And I love this product. It's a pretty perfect little product starting with, you know, a small amount of glutamine. She was already taking more glutamine, so that wasn't the really big mover. We've got some zinc carnosine, which is really helpful for healing up kind of damaged mucosa and the digestive tract. Cat's claw, pectin, you know, those are hit or miss for me. I'd be happy with those in or out. The aloe vera, the inner leaf, the juice, so soothing, so demulcent. We're trying to kind of build up that lining so it's not so inflamed and raw. And you can see a bit of a theme here as it goes on. Slippery elm, same story. Demulcent, soothing, building. Licorice, it has some similar properties right there. And uh, again, it's a little bit uh, potently, I was gonna say a little bit, it's potently anti-inflammatory. Um, same with okra. Chamomile, again, it's anti-inflammatory, does a bunch of other pieces there, helps with digestion, but right here, it's just the inflammation modulator that we're looking for, and then marshmallow root as well. So we added that product into the treatment plan. She tolerated it, which is always the question, you know, how are you gonna tolerate this, this product? And we also ordered off a calprotectin lab just so we could have more data. And we found that on a follow-up, you know, less than a month later, her calprotectin had dropped from 1330 down to 66. So it's not quite within that zero to 50 range, but it's the best that it had ever been from the point that she had been diagnosed back in early 2022. Pretty exciting. She was pretty excited. I was pretty excited as well. Things were working. So the patient saw that improvement in her cow protection. She was quite relieved. I was quite relieved as well. Hallelujah. Huge win. Celebrate. Don't eat industrial seed oils. <laughs> Um, and then the specialist um, sent out for the same test, the MR enterography test that uh, originally found the Crohn's disease diagnosis. We want to be comparing apples to apples here. And we're seeing here that previously described asymmetrical thickening, mural thickening, um, have resolved. And that was that seven centimeter strip that was the really concerning piece. It was all kind of emanating from that piece. The comments from the uh, gastroenterologist 
Um, he was saying that previous described abnormality along the ileum is resolved, no abnormality of concern to suggest active inflammatory bowel disease. Hallelujah, big, big win. So right here, we can see that she's moving into remission. We're hoping it's gonna be nice, durable remission so that she doesn't have to get onto those biologics that her body just couldn't tolerate. And we're looking really good, so far so good. She's keeping up with a lot of these kind of treatment plan pieces is the curcumin, the boswellia, the fish oil, the butyrate, the PHGG, the spore-based probiotics, but at a lower dose. And I said, look, just keep that GI revive in the cupboard. And if you do have a flare, if you are exposed to something that the body can't tolerate and you, you do wind up kind of flaring, we know what works. Jump on the product, quell the inflammation, get back down to baseline, and then we'll see about you know improving any symptoms that are still there. And I'm so grateful that the patient was happy for me to share her results and her story and her treatment plan. You know, she said, look, if it helps anyone that was in the same position as me, I'm all for it. So, so kind of passionate about sharing that. And she really wanted me to stress the importance of diet to you guys. And I agree, I think it was the single most important intervention, restricting gluten, she is off gluten for the rest of her life, um, restricting industrial seed oils. You know, she had to be careful that she wasn't getting exposed to them because they're ubiquitous, they're everywhere. And that was a really big flare for her back when everything went south for her. And the other really big piece is she's starting to expand it. She was very strict, no refined foods, whole foods. She's expanding that a little bit, but being cautious. And I said to her, if you do experience a flare, just jump back on that same product, the GI Revive, keep a little bit in your cupboard. And if you have a really big flare, it worked once, it's likely to work again quell that inflammation, look for where that trigger was, and then we can build um, on the treatment plan as needed as symptoms arise. But so far she's doing really well, and uh, yeah, just thought you guys would get a little bit out of that Crohn's disease treatment plan. So if it helped, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you in a future video. And remember, if you're in Australia or New Zealand and you're looking for digestive health support, then reach out to us here at the Byron Herbalist Clinic.